Hey, come right on in. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be here. And how wonderful that you are there. And this is going to be a great show because we live in a country that actually acknowledges, take a day out of the calendar to acknowledge mothers. And I think that is a wonderful thing. It says something really good about our country. So we're going to talk about mothers today. I know for myself that uh, just about the greatest thing God ever did for me was to allow me to have Michael and Meredith and uh, I guess the most, you know, the, really the, the, the important thing you say about being a mother is they educate you. Uh, you think you know everything until you get this little tiny six pound thing home and then you really begin to learn about life and what a gift, what a gift. So we're, we're anxious to really acknowledge mother today and at the end of the program I'm going to uh, show you a tribute I paid to my own mother uh, the year after she died. So I'll bring you up to date on that. But my guests are Stephanie and Wanda and they are absolute favorites of the viewers and we like to get them all, just the home folks on once in a while, so that's what we're doing today. And also, um, Stephanie had Tiffany stop by earlier this week, and they made a, a little kind of a decorative cross uh, that you could fix for your mother very, 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 very simply, something really special. And after that, we're going to fix the strawberry trifle, which is um, something beautiful. You can almost look at it and it reminds you of mother. It's something beautiful, something tastes great. We'll put that together for you. And then I'm going to talk to Wanda and Stephanie, not only just about our mothers, but those great people, uh, women that maybe, you know, really fed into your life and, and your sisters and your aunts and so forth. Uh, just all the great women that God's put in your life and they've made a difference. Before we watch um, these girls making a cross, I want to offer you this little book, Prayers and Promises for Mothers. It's just a, a little uh, kind of, a little bit bigger than just a pocketbook, but it's just full of great things of encouragement and scripture. And it's yours for any gift, any gift that you can send us. And can I ask you to send your very best gift? The information is on the screen. If you use your credit card, 1-800-229-0059 and the address box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. All right, let's take a look at Stephanie and Tiffany as they're once again working really hard with their hands, making something special that can really make a memory. Take a look. You all know how much I love having Tiffany from Nook and Cranny. It just, I love learning. I love learning new things, especially things that are in my wheelhouse. And this is in my wheelhouse. So today we're talking about Mother's Day. Yes. And I always say being a mother is the hardest, most wonderful job because I know what it's like to love unconditionally, and I know what it's like to worry. Right, I love worry. I, so mm -hmm. it's the All most day, wonderful every day. job. So I love to do personal things for my mom. Yes. So I messaged Tiffany, I said, well, hey, what about something for Mother's Day? She comes back five minutes later with this idea, melted my heart. I'm like, you know these are God-inspired ideas, <laughs> right? Because he's, he's the only one that could give you something like this that fast. Yes, so absolutely. So tell me what you came up with. Well, I'll tell you, actually, I was kind of inspired by the manger that we did, mm -hmm. the one show. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, okay, let's go reclaimed, easy, build it, but have a lot of meaning behind it. And mm -hmm. it was this cross. We um, These are stakes that we brought back from Ohio. So I had these laying around the shop. Um, but basically, it's something super easy you could build with scrap material, um, put it together, and then the thing that really Really sets it off is adding this embellishment and it can be a brooch earring um, button something that was your mom's your grandma's or just someone special in your life put uh -huh. it on the front embellish it and then you've got this average piece of wood that's become something special and you can gift it or you can just hang it and it can be a memory for you also. right right so we're oh. gonna build it it's super easy but I think it's gonna make a huge impact and you know in your home or giving it to somebody and you can just get steaks from you know Home Depot or Lowe's or and it doesn't have to be the wood these weathered. are tomato steaks yeah. that happen to just be a million years old right <laughs> Which so we but, love. Yeah, it makes them even cooler. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the lumber, um, they have scraps. They mm -hmm. have yard sale st steaks. They have all kinds of stuff. So just find something. I cut this in half, half yesterday, and then we're just gonna we're gonna um, nail it together. Um, we use our. This is a Brad nailer, as opposed to using hammers and nails. We like power tools, right. so we're gonna use that today. <laughs> okay. And you're just gonna place it wherever you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've done some and kind of make it a little crooked. It just kind of depends on what look you're going for. Okay. And then you're gonna put two nails in it. I like straight. Yeah. And you want to come over just a little bit so you're right on top of that other piece. So it puts, there you go. 
perfect. And then one Love more. Love it. And that's it. And now your cross is How together. Easy. Now, if you don't have one of these, just get a hammer and nails. Yes, yes. It's simple. Absolutely. Hammer and nails. We've, this could cost you next to nothing, it, and it will mean so much. Chances are you much. probably have a lot of this, mm -hmm. you know, at home. Next thing is we added some twine to the middle, which you wouldn't have to. I mean, if you have a button or earring and you want to maybe hot glue it there, you, you can, can do, do ribbon. that. You could do ribbon, some colorful ribbon, ribbon mm -hmm. lace, anything like that. Your mom's favorite color ribbon? Yes, that would be. really make it personal. It can even take a shred off of, you know, if you have a shirt or a blanket or a tie or just something, mm -hmm. a scarf, handkerchief, you can wrap that around it too. So we're just going to oh, wrap be this really around. Oh, that really a scarf material. Scarf material, mm -hmm. yeah. And just kind of make it meaningful and have a little more purpose than just a few pieces of wood put together. Mm -hmm. And then for for the twine, we're just kind of wrapping it around here. I just love to give it a little idea. bit more of a rustic look here. I just love personal things. I just, I, I always, when I buy gifts, I always try to figure out something personal that will mean that, something that's to right. the person. That's right. And when you've put thought into that, it shows. So, mm -hmm. and they really appreciate it. So, after you get as much as you want on there, you're just going to tie it in the knot in the back here. I don't have my scissors. There's scissors but... right in the drawer right oh, there. Oh, perfect. Yep. Oh, how handy. <laughs> There we go. So we'll just tie the knot and then you're going to get your button or your brooch. I think we have also some clip on earrings mm -hmm. here. This is so pretty. And then you're going to attach it to the back or the front there. Okay, this, so let, are, do we do another one and tie it nope, around? This, this nope. actually, because this is a clip on earring, you can actually just slide it in the back here like that. Oh, yeah. And this one happened to be just a brooch, so we just um, pinned it right on there. Mm -hmm. If you were doing a button or something that didn't have something to attach it on the back, you can mm -hmm. use some hot glue. But we just slide, uh, slid it right there into the twine, and you're good to go. And this can be something that can be hung on the wall or kind of just propped up on a mantle or bookshelf mm -hmm. wherever you want it but it has a lot of meaning to it because you've used something that you know right. special to you right so think you know just think about think about your or some even a special woman in your life mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be moms yeah it can exactly. be somebody who means something it actually doesn't you. even have to be a woman but because we've got mother's day yeah, coming up right. i think it's perfect right for that. i think it's great this is just fabulous i love it I love learning new things. I think it's and fabulous. And so simple. Yes. Yes. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for Thanks joining for us again. Thanks for having me. We're so happy to have you. We're so happy. I'm just so happy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Thanks for being here. All right. We're going to make something pretty for mothers. Yes. They, they like it. Strawberry trifle. Um, I wonder how many Super people easy. really made a, a trifle. They are beautiful if you're artistic, so I'm going to leave that up to you a little bit. But um, whipping cream, berries, angel food cake. We got one to show you. Maybe bake your own. And then this is kind of the glue. Right. Little right. Vanilla, it's just milk, vanilla milk. pudding, sour cream, and some orange zest. Okay. Start okay. to assemble it, Mike. So we're just going to take some of the angel food cake at the bottom, and then you're going to take some and make I thought a little it would individual be fun to make ones. a little, a little one and see what it's like. Yep. And then I'm just going to take some of the pudding yumminess. I call that the glue. Yeah. And put that in there. We're speed cooking today, yeah. so take your time at home and enjoy it. Yeah, because um, lining the strawberries up could take a little time. Yeah. This is real whipping cream. Real whipping cream that. None of oh, that I should have. I, I took a picture of Arthlene Rippy this morning because oh. this is how she stands. When she's uh, whipping yeah, with I her hand on her hip. Get it all over <laughs> me. Oh. So I took a picture because it was quite entertaining. Okay. Let me give okay. you some. Okay. There all right. There you go. Spread that out. And then you're just going to take the strawberries and you're going to make them pretty around the edges. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you'll want to take a little more time You know time what? Take your it. time. Mm -hmm. It's like therapy, really. This part's like therapy. I wonder who thought of this. Cause this right now oh, it's just stressful because I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> What a what a great idea to get all these dessert flavors. Yeah, I think somebody goes, okay, this is what I have. What can I put in a bowl? Uh -huh. You know, some stressed out mama probably yeah. had to make a dessert really fast, and this is what she had. Yeah, and uh, okay, to remind you again oh, sure. that you can have some strawberries. Uh, all right, and then you just do oh, and then put some in the middle mm -hmm. of of the. And of course. <laughs> We live in the... Um, I feel like I'm on Jeopardy, like the time is ticking yeah, away. Do, <laughs> do, do, do. And then more cake. I never miss Jeopardy. My family knows, don't ever yeah. call. I don't watch Jeopardy because it makes me feel really not very smart. Me too. <laughs> me too. These people answer every question. I'm like, how do you know this? Okay, more pudding. 
It's good. And you know what? This is not ultra sweet. Not at all. Yeah, this one is a perfect dessert. And you know what else I was thinking you could do? You could put mm. some orange zest in your... Um, in your whipped cream. Yeah. Well, let me tell you if this is my idea. Okay. This is great. <laughs> do it in the little thing. It's real cute for your... Yes. Uh, and then you don't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah, because oh man, when, that orange smells really, really fresh. When, when you dig into these, they you make get a mess. Messy. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm just going to put it over the top. I'm not going to decorate. Yeah, but then you should put one around the edge yes, and the rest of it on the top. And there's your beautiful, beautiful. Look at oh, how gorgeous. Gorgeous, friends. And so simple. There we go. <laughs> Speed it, trifling right there. <laughs> yeah, we really did go a little fast on this, but you, I'm sure you got the idea. And if you want the recipe, information's coming up on your screen. We email them, we mail them. Uh, if you, it's all Whatever free. way we can get it to you, we'll be glad to do that. Stay, I'm going to talk to Stephanie and Wanda, and you're going to love it. These are great girls. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. a fast one. <laughs> that was fast. We know you can make it look better at home. And um, according to the feedback I get from you wonderful viewers, you love these gals and it's nice to get them on together once in a while and uh, be hard to do homekeepers without them. So glad you're here. Glad you're here, Wanda. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I want to start with Wanda. Let me say this about these girls. They are wonderful daughters. They're good mothers. Uh, they're very, very family oriented and uh, I work with them every single day and they really do look out for their moms. Your mom at this point is, her health is kind of like this and you're getting ready to go see her, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's she doing today? I mean, it's, it changes every day, it doesn't it? It changes every day. Um, I haven't talked to her this morning, but yesterday when I spoke with her, she said she was having a better day. Mm -hmm. So that is good. And the family are all going, right? We're all I can't believe we're getting all of us together mm -hmm. uh, in May to see my mom. That's so that's so important. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Stephanie's all all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, got a, she, I got a cousin here. She drives over four states. No, uh, that's really great. Um, and you just had your your brother here, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going back to Tennessee going, in a couple of weeks. My parents are celebrating their 50th wedding oh, anniversary, nice. so we're going up for that. Wonderful. What, what do you think it was that instilled? Both of you have a you just very very uh, families first. It's obvious. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie said she's so, not going to talk. <laughs> what is? I'm trying to think. I, I just don't know. Maybe I was the middle child, but... Oh, I'm a middle child. Uh, there we Me go. Too. There we go. That's We're it. We're perfect. So, yeah. I think that might be it. We no. are the least spoiled, the middle children. Go ahead. I, I can't even amen yeah. that because I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to get in trouble. No, there you I, go. That could create trouble. Yeah, it could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Wanda... It seems to me, because I work so closely with you, that mm -hmm. that uh, your relatives call you. You know that you're kind of a source. Oh yeah, they go to. I'm not sure why. <laughs> after my father passed away, suddenly my mom just stopped doing all family things, and I think you know she just she just couldn't handle it at the time. So I don't know. They all started calling me for every little thing mm -hmm. that there was, and pretty soon my phone started just ringing all the time. I mean. Mm -hmm. I can you tell don't you will comment, <clears throat> you know, that phone's connected to your, well, I have seven brothers and <laughs> sisters, and then I have children and grandchildren, they all call. They yeah, all call. we're all grandmothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're all grandmothers. Well, don't you think it's because you're so, this is what I get from it, you're so strong in Jesus that you're like a foundation. Well, don't I you, think that's true. I, I pray that that's true. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful. They that's a gravitate good toward her. Mm -hmm. Also, um, she's quite a perfectionist, and... <laughs> 
<laughs> that can be Could drive you nuts. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, but when oh, you think dear. of motherhood, <clears throat> it's not always your biological mother. And sometimes I, I like to thank God for those. Uh, I had a wonderful mother, and you'll learn more about her at the end of the program, and uh, there'll be pictures of her. But she was the most sacrificing person I've ever met in my life. But there were others, mm -hmm. Sunday school teachers, uh, women, um, maybe at some point, you know, the, uh, you were one of the only Christians in your family, so there was somebody in the church, some Sunday school teacher. Is anybody like that with you, Stephen? Oh, I, had, I worked <clears throat> with a woman, her name was Nancy Hamilton, and she taught me what it was like to be Jesus on this earth. Mm -hmm. I had never met and one, I, what a compliment! You could, she, you never heard a negative word come out of her mouth. In fact, people didn't like her because they said nobody can be that nice. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh mm -hmm. no, she was that loving, she mm -hmm. was that nice, mm -hmm. and she taught me that you can be that nice and you don't have to say negative things. And she never gossiped and she just never said a negative word. And mm -hmm. she was so loving, mm -hmm. and she made my pregnancy so amazing because I worked with her <clears throat> when I was pregnant with Alexis, and I came in every single day to some, just a little something on my desk about. Now, were you a new Christian at the time? I was, yes. Why? Wow. Whew, mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is a windfall yes. to get someone like yes. that. You had a lot of Sunday school <clears throat> teachers growing up, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> we, my mom, I mean, you know, I never saw the Wizard of Oz till I was like 19, because we <laughs> were always in church on Sunday night and I always came on just before CYC. But you know, um, when I think about my childhood, um, over the years, I think latter years, I learned that my mom is quite the prayer warrior. And we all go to my mother mm -hmm. for prayer. And so she was in, in very influential in that way. But my church family was huge because, um, you know, I, I do think it's extremely important. Uh, number one, I um, to get involved in a church mm -hmm. and then make sure your child's involved in a youth group. We had a great youth group. Thank God we did because it was only about mm -hmm. practically our church and Catholic church. And I think there was a Methodist church up the street, but, you know, so yeah, but, that's when that that's when we didn't yeah. blend that well. Or yeah, so well. there was that influence which was huge for me, mm -hmm. and um, but the other woman that really influenced me in my twenties, mm -hmm. uh, I had never met anyone like her, mm -hmm. and her and her husband came out of retirement to the little country church in in Hallsport, New York, and I saw this woman, she was talking about Jesus and the miracles, and I'm like, really, <laughs> this never happens here. And she said to me, it's because you don't have the faith to believe. And I said, well, who are you? Wow. Who are you to tell me I don't have the faith to believe? And really, I was kind of Were that, you a teenager? No, no, I was in my 20s. Oh. Uh, I should have known better, but, you know, I just didn't have quite that relationship that I should have. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't always discipled. I went through some troubled times. Yeah, I was going to say during that time period. Sometimes that doesn't resonate when you come out of real. No, bad it time. it just doesn't. And so I was I was really angry. I think at that point. So when I met her and she was telling me all these wonderful things, I was just very flippant, and not kind. But there was something about her that I knew she was different than anyone I've ever met before in my life. She had such a love and an unconditional love, and she. She had said that when she didn't want to come out of retirement, she wanted to stay right where she was in, in New Jersey. She loved it. That was her life. But she said God told her to go to the mountain because there were jewels in that mountain. And here I am, 22 years old, very, very pregnant, trying to find God. And I stood up in church one Sunday night. I can't believe I did this. And I said, I'm just trying to find God. <laughs> And I said, you know, the only thing I got was seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what that means, but I'll see if I can try to find it. Mm -hmm. And she said, she didn't know me at the time. She sat in that front row and, she's, and the Lord told her, turn around, look at this young lady. This is why I've sent you to the mountains. She's a jewel and mm -hmm. you need to minister to this young lady. So that started Thank my God. journey. Yeah, he's got those kind of women. He just has people. Mm -hmm. I call them diamonds. Mm -hmm. They are diamonds and jewels and that are in the church body that, mm -hmm. that minister to us as young wives. And this is where the older woman should teach the younger. Absolutely. Uh, 
doesn't happen. That's very really often. what this uh, program is kind of all about. Yeah. Also, I think one of the things about that story is that you were coming out of an awful hard place in life. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need somebody to speak faith because you've dropped yours. Even, even if you are uh, raised in church and Sunday school and all, you, you can absolutely drop your faith by the side of the road because of circumstances. And then God has those, God has those people who come in. You know, at, at one point I had said, it, in front of a group of women. I don't know why God just, why I was that vocal, but I was. And I said, you know, if God doesn't come and show me personally that he's real and that he loves me, then I swear to God, I will never enter into church again. I will never speak his name, nor will I allow my children to walk in the house of God, supposedly. Whoa. Can you imagine me saying not that? Not really, not oh, from my. you. I was very vocal, wasn't I? Uh -huh. And I was like, but I was so desperate. Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference. Also honest. Well, I was. Uh, sometimes those things come out that uh, have such an edge, but that's really honest. That's what that's what is going on with you. Um, you're you have a daughter. You don't. I have a daughter, um, and there's a there's a big difference in raising a son and a daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, thankfully, my daughter is a good mother, and Michael married a wonderful, wonderful girl that her whole life is her family, her children, and her, her grandchildren. And I think that is the important thing as we sit here and talk on this subject, and that is that we want those generations to follow us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Our kids keep us on track, really. There, there might be things you would do once in a while. You're tempted this. And, and then, I mean, for me, I remember my children. I remember my grandchildren. And there's nothing in the world that is worth causing them to stumble or causing them to lose the straight ahead for Jesus' goal. Now, my mom died in 2009. She lived to be a hundred and about four months. Mm. And... I paid a tribute to her, and it's been that many years ago, and I thought I would re-air it today. I hope you'll listen to it, because I, Anna and I call my mother the most successful person I've ever known, and when I tell you why, um, you'll know why I feel that way. She sacrificed for anybody and everybody, and I know that she got a great big crown when she walked into heaven. Meet my mother, Ellen Holden McClure. I would like to tell you about the woman who had the greatest influence on my life and the most successful woman I've ever known, my mother, Ellen McClure, who recently went to heaven. I say she was successful because of statistics, not just speaking as a loving daughter. When I was just an infant and my sister Dawn a toddler, my parents pastored a church in Fort Collins, Colorado. The local newspaper carried a weekly column titled, Meet Your Neighbor. Not too long ago, I found that column, which featured my mom as the neighbor. It was pasted in an old scrapbook. She was in her 20s at the time. The article mentioned that as a young minister's wife, one of her goals was that her young daughters would learn music. Now, here's the success story. Today, my family consists of six pianists, one violinist, nine vocalists, some of those are recording artists, by the way, two bass players, three guitarists, three organists, four harpists, two trumpeters, five ministers of music, and four piano teachers. And the last time I was with one of her great-great-grandchildren, two-year-old Andrew, I heard him humming a Sunday school chorus and exclaimed to his mother and grandmother who were present, he's singing on pitch, wow. Mom never realized it, but she and God did an exceedingly and abundantly beyond what anyone could ever ask or think. However, the platform was definitely not a place for her. Rather, she chose to work in church nurseries, took gifts to neighbors, and loved being a nurse's aide. If ever I've met a servant heart, it's my mom. I oversaw her care for many years, and it was so difficult to watch dementia 
blindness, hearing loss, and pain overtake her. After she passed her 100th birthday, her health went into a rapid decline. During that extremely tough time, I often thought of the very old hymn, Stand By Me. The final verse states, when I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, O oh, thou lily of the valley, stand by me. O oh, thou lily of the valley. I've lived in Florida a long time and have never seen a lily of the valley growing here. But as a child in Colorado, I used to encounter a few of them tucked away under the lilac bushes in our backyard. There was just something about them. I would stretch out on the grass to get a closer look at that magnificent reference to Christ. To me, they were arresting, exquisite, so very delicate and tender, and add to all of that the sweet, sweet fragrance. My mom's life had become an unbearable burden. As she neared the end, I laid my hands on her forehead while my daughter Meredith held her feeble, wasted hand. When Jesus Christ entered the room and he grasped the strong hand of her spirit, and as the sweet fragrance of the lily of the valley overtook the stench of death and disease, he ushered her through the chilly waters of Jordan and the valley of the shadow of death straight into heaven's splendor and the arms of my daddy. I have no doubt whatsoever that those who knew her well would rise today with me and all of her family members to call her blessed. Here are some of the photos of her life. The final picture was the last one taken of her holding Elizabeth Ann Riles, her great, great granddaughter, born on her 100th birthday. Here's my mom.